I'm gonna be honest with you, we're here today to solve a little bit of a first world problem, but that said, it's still pretty annoying. If you have a go bag, and a great go bag where you can take all your gadgets with you and all your stuff, one of the annoying things is when you have to pull those gadgets out at the end of the day and plug them into the charger, and then in the morning you have to put them back, and then when you get home you have to take them out again, and you, there's this back and forth constantly with the bag and your gadgets and charging. So wouldn't it be great if you actually had the charging integrated into the bag? And wouldn't it even be better if that charger was also a battery so it could power your stuff when you are gone for a few days, or you just need that extra power because you forgot to charge something? Well, you actually can integrate a battery charger into your bag, and then you will never ever lose power again. First, let's take a look at what you'll need. A high capacity USB battery of at least 10,000 milliamps, or multiple batteries that meet or exceed that number. A bag of your choice, preferably with a nice pocket area to store the batteries. Cables for your gadgets, around 3 feet in length and preferably no longer than 6 feet. A knife or scissors for destroying small parts of your bag while routing the cables through it. A sewing kit for fixing the damage you do and making your bag look pretty again. Step 1. Pick the right battery. Most batteries kind of suck. They just charge your gadgets, but then you have to charge the batteries, and you can't charge your gadgets and the battery at the same time. So you need to pick one that does both. And in my research, there really aren't very many. There are two options that work pretty well. First is a Zender battery, but that's currently in Kickstarter. It works really well, it charges over USB, and it can charge through, which means that it will charge your gadgets and the battery at the same time when plugged into an outlet. That said, it is not available right now, but it will be available in November, so if you can wait and go through the Kickstarter, you can get a couple of those batteries pretty soon. You also have another option through Zag. It's a little bit more expensive, although you can probably find some refurbished ones for less. Whether or not you want to do that is another story. And you can get those. They plug in directly to an outlet, so you need to have sort of a power cube or strip in your bag, so you can have two of them if you need two of them. If you only need one, you just need an extension cord. Either way, both of these batteries will work. Just buy one, two, or however many you need and can fit into your bag, and you'll be good to go. Step two, decide where to store your power supply. Your battery is your power supply, and so is the plug that connects it to the outlet, so it can charge the battery and the gadgets when you don't want to power them solely by the battery. To do that, you have to find a front storage pocket or some sort of area in the bag where you can put them. Every bag is a little bit different. Sometimes there's a laptop area if you're not using it, or an iPad area if you're not using it that you can put it in. A lot of backpacks have a front pocket. Look at your bag, it should be pretty obvious where you can stick it. Once you do that, you're going to need to cut a hole to get the cord out. So you're going to cut that hole either with a scissor or a knife, and then you're going to sew it back up using a whip stitch. A whip stitch is pretty simple. You're basically just sticking it through and then looping it around where the edges of the hole are so you're sewing up the edges so the bag doesn't fray or tear or anything like that. And it tends to look a little bit better than a hole you just cut in your bag. Once you've got that taken care of, you're going to have to figure out precisely where to put the plug. In some cases, you may want to just pull the plug out of the pocket if it's accessible easily, especially if you have a large USB charger. If it's just a little plug, you might want to get a prong protector. I'm not really sure where you can buy one of those, but a lot of the times they come on plugs and extension cords when you purchase them in the first place, so you can just slide it on. Step 3. Route your cables. Just like we did in the last step, you're going to need to cut a bunch of holes in your bag to route cables through them so they can go from the charger slash battery to the gadgets you want to charge. And in order to do that, you're going to have to figure out where those gadgets are going to be. So go ahead, map out your bag, figure out where you're going to put your phone, your tablet, or whatever else you're going to charge up. Once you do that, you have to figure out how the cables are going to go through. As you can see in my bag, I have my phone in the front flap. And in order to get it there, I have to have it coming out of the back of the bag and then into the flap. So I just cut an area in the inner part of the fabric, routed the cable through there, and you can see it a little bit when you open up the bag, but for the most part it's hidden. And then it comes out into the front pocket where my phone plugs in. I did a couple of other ones. There's one in a side pocket that goes to charge a uh, camera, and there's another one in the front that charges my iPad mini and a Nintendo 3DS. So once you figure out where those are, you really just need to create the holes and sew them up and get the cables through. It's a pretty easy thing to do, but it requires some measurement and the simple sewing technique that we showed you just recently. So that's pretty much all there is to it. As you can see, it doesn't take up a lot of room in this tiny little bag. This is something that fits a 7-inch tablet, so it's not very big. It holds a lot of stuff, and it has plenty of room for the battery packs, so you can put something together like this very easily using what we just showed you, but be sure to read the whole post over at Lifehacker for the detailed instructions.